Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Starting Line. I'm your host, Sarah Allen. There is no set standard for a length of a bill. Some bills can be hundreds of pages long, like the supplemental budget bill taken up by the House last week. It is more than 430 pages long. Other bills can be smaller. Some can be just a couple sentences to a paragraph to a few pages long. This week's Starting Line bill is just a page long, but don't let its size fool you. It could drastically change the way you view your dentist. Sponsored by Representative Jerry Hurtas, House File 2581 would authorize licensed dentists to administer influenza vaccinations. The Republican from Greenfield says the bill would especially benefit those in rural communities who have fewer locations to go to for a flu shot and the elderly in Minnesota, of whom he says 80% see the dentist at least once a year. Thank you, Representative Hurtas, for sitting down and talking to us about your bill. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Can you describe your bill in more detail for us? Well, the bill that I offered, uh, the genesis of it, came from an article that I read uh, last summer. And uh, it really was talking about the uh, control of the spread of infectious diseases. And uh, in it, there was uh, some mention uh, about dentists being uh, an integral part of the healthcare delivery system. And the more I thought about it, I thought with regard to uh, immunizations, uh, with uh, possible pandemics that could hit our population, uh, I thought, well, what do we really have set up and why aren't we utilizing people who are competent and qualified as part of the healthcare system? Why shouldn't people be able to have a, a dentist give them an immunization shot as well. So uh, the more I thought about it, I thought, you know, I'm really going to introduce a bill and s see if there's traction for it. And um, I guess I shouldn't have been surprised, but there's been overwhelming support for it. And it was like, well, why didn't we think of this sooner? So uh, Representative Lieb Liebling, who chairs the uh, House committee, uh, thought it was a wonderful idea, and uh, I asked her to sign on to it as co-author, and, and it um, really had uh, little resistance in, in going through the process, so I'm excited about it. Um, one thing that I think is important to understand is that this really is about access and choice for consumers, and dentists are highly skilled and highly trained. They administer anesthetic blocks in very small little oral cavities and are able to precisely uh, anesthetize a, a nerve, they're certainly competent to give an intramuscular injection uh, on the outside of the body, and there's several injection sites. So with the idea that rural Minnesota uh, doesn't have a CVS or a Walgreens or a Cub Foods or a Minute Clinic just to walk into, uh, but a lot of small towns have a dentist. And I thought, this is really kind of a natural, and it's not about pushing uh, vaccination programs or immunizations to children. Uh, you know, I, I wasn't interested in, in creating controversy for that area of, of the vaccination programs that uh, certainly has a lot of concern for people's, but it is about particularly the elderly population. 80% uh, of, in Minnesota anyway, 80% of the elderly see their dentist at least once a year, if not twice. So it's a real opportunity for them if they want to uh, get an influenza immunization, if they want to try and spare themselves from complications of respiratory distress from flu and, and other things that uh, are you know, serious complications for the elderly, I thought this was just a natural. What type of feedback have you gotten from dentists across the state regarding your bill? Well, I uh, have talked with dentists, some of them who I know. I talked to my own dentist. Uh, he certainly uh, supported it. Uh, I've talked to a couple other dentists that I know. I went to the uh, Dental Association meeting recently and uh, talked about it and the uh, lobbyists for the Dental Association. They're not opposing it, nor are they uh, beating the drum that it's something they you know, feel a real strong or compelling need to do. It's strictly voluntary if a, if a local dentist should decide that he you know, wants to uh, just submit himself to the additional training that's in part of the bill. It's, it's really minor amount of training, but there are some things that they need to do in terms of storage of the um, vaccine and things like that. The facilities are there. But even in a regular dentist's office, all of the emergency 
equipment is there if there would be an adverse reaction. And, and certainly in uh, emergency rooms and whatnot, uh, medical doctors call upon dentists to uh, um, come and treat situations where there's trauma to the mouth uh, or you know, to the jaw structure and, and, uh, and teeth and things like that. And so they do work hand in hand. And the bill also does require a reporting to the primary physician that the influenza shot has been administered. So if you think about how oftentimes you maybe go to a dentist and you have to sit for 15 or 20 minutes while you, you're waiting to see the dentist, it's certainly an opportunity to fill out the pre-screening questionnaire to make sure that you, know, uh, you meet all of the criteria to get a shot. And then after you see the dentist, if, uh, if you want to get that shot while you're there, um, probably after your procedure, you'll get one. I don't think there's much opposition to it. And, and it is a voluntary thing. Dentists don't have to do it. Um, it's just if they want to provide it and for some of those communities where there are a dentist office or two and, and if, uh, if it creates greater choice and access for uh, uh, patients and uh, I think it's a, a great thing to do. Let's go to the video board to see where House File 2581 has been and is going in the legislative process. It had its introduction and first reading. It was referred to the House Health and Human Services Policy Committee there, it was amended and laid over for possible inclusion in the Omnibus Health and Human Services Policy Bill, and Representative Hurtas is hopeful the bill will be passed into law. You can learn more about these bills and others in our online news service session daily. This nonpartisan news source employs a staff of professional writers, editors, and photographers that provide you with in depth nonpartisan coverage of the Minnesota House of Representatives. Make sure to subscribe to Session Daily to receive updates right to your email inbox. You can also watch live coverage of committee and floor action on House TV. Coming up next week, we'll feature a new bill and look to see if there's been any movement on Representative Hurtas' bill. Of course, you can always email me if there's a specific bill you'd like us to feature here on Starting Line. And remember, hundreds of bills get introduced every legislative session in Minnesota. All of them first have to cross the starting line.